So as a stopgap measure, because I am trying to find time to edit other videos, let's just take a look at some of the stuff that I've picked up over the last couple of months. Number one, it's an interesting one, I found some cheap Sharpie metallic permanent markers. Now, if you've uh, been very active in the Warhammer uh, community on YouTube, or wargaming in general, uh, this is the kind of thing where uh, people use these to paint metallics very quickly. So if you look here, I actually painted this belt buckle with one of these. And these are the three sets. You get silver, gold, and bronze. And always remember, you got to store tip down. That's the big thing about Sharpies that they always forget to tell you. you got to store the tip down or else it might dry out. And these are fine tip. So they actually do a pretty good job of doing metallics. So that's a very interesting. It's, it's a different way of doing metallics. Uh, with the way that I do metallics with painting, this is actually a much faster way of doing it. Especially for like cheap miniatures where I'm not like overly concerned. Uh, I got these for $3. I thought that was a very good price, a buck each. So we got some uh, Gale Force 9 stuff. Now, this is part of their Battlefield in a Box terrain stuff. I got this for $15. I think this MSRP'd for like 30 I want to say, when it first came out, maybe less. But I felt $15 was a decent uh, buy on this one, because this is a very large lovely bit of terrain. This is very well packed, too. Um, hmm, okay. Uh, having misgivings, though. Look how nice that is, but the material. This is uh, not altogether plastic. This is, I, I don't know what material this is, but it's, uh, it seems a bit on the brittle end. This is almost like ceramic. I don't think this would break that easily. I think you could probably drop this and it's not going to break. But, uh, oh yeah, let's see, look at that. There's some casting errors, or perhaps it actually already broke. Unless that's how it's supposed to be. Might be a break too. So, ah, oh, this is a shame. I was really going to recommend, uh, if people want to kind of search, uh, you know, th this was the last one in stock. Whenever I do searches for stuff like this, I generally like to just uh, go on, you know, I'll, I'll use search sites like Google that have a shopping tab, and then I'll just kind of search through the name brands like Gale Force 9 um, and just see if anybody has uh, some of this stuff on a cheaper product. This is very nice looking. I like this quite a bit. This is perfectly in scale for D&D. &D. You could have something in it and then lift it up when the players go in, but the... Uh, the material I don't like. It, it reminds me of those uh, cheap um, uh, garden things, like the little uh, fairy houses and stuff you sometimes see in stores, and they're made of the cheap kind of ceramic material. Yeah, I don't like that material. It's a very, it's a very well painted obby. I think this is one of the nicer examples of a pre-painted thing you'll buy. But uh, yeah, I don't. Like, I would rather have this in PVC. And again, too, uh, 3D printed resin. I've seen stuff like this. Maybe not quite exactly as large as this, but stuff that was had more details. And the only reason I was going to... The only reason I was going to recommend this above something like that is because, like, that resin is very uh, brittle. And I didn't assume this would be, like, some weird ceramic mix. I picked up this from Walmart, uh, $10, raw 10, rattlesnake, and I'm going to try to black bomb this and then repaint it. Uh, the tail is very, very flexible, and the head is incredibly stiff plastic, so very weird. Um, it's kind of like right here where the tail meets the head, so it keeps the pose pretty well. Uh, this is kind of a, obviously a, you know, weird McFarlane product uh, where he is perhaps hearkening back to the days of the, oh, so cool 90s stuff. So maybe somebody approached him for a toy line and he said, well, maybe I'll design something like 
from back in the 90s when I was cool. If, if I really don't like this uh, floppy part, uh, and this is... Because this might be hard to paint. Uh, it's, it's very... It's very spongy. Uh, and if you did not know, spongy materials like this can be sometimes primed with polyurethane primer. Usually if it's this flexible and spongy, any kind of spray primer, primer is not going to work. But the head part, this part, is incredibly dense plastic. So this will take primer very well. Lots of nice details, obviously. So if, if worse comes to worse, uh, I can use this in a project. I can cut off the floppy tail and then just have the snake head as a stand-up statue. All right, a couple more random pickups. Uh, I got these on for uh, 10 bucks each. These are Rune Wars expansion sets. Uh, this one is really nice. Had a nice uh, figure that could be used as a druid, but I really liked the giant moose with rider, which I've never seen before. Uh, there was the giant moose that was in the uh, Rime of the Ice Maiden thing, and that was interesting, so kind of on a moose kick. And also some Death Knights, uh, four for nine dollars and change uh interesting very chunky unlike some of the uh um mantic ones that i have that are a little bit more sleeker so these i thought looked very interesting uh and i can't wait to put these together and see what they look like and also i got this and what this is is a uv flashlight and you might be wondering why i got a uv flashlight uh and this is why i got the uv thing they, uh, you know, Green Stuff World, a bunch of different places sell the fancy stuff, but I thought I would just try to get some of the cheap light cure UV resin and see what I can do. Uh, I've seen people use this to great effect in some projects, and so I thought I would give it a give it a try out. I got some lovely tools for sculpting, which I've already opened and started to use when I was using the uh, little scraper tool there to get a little extra, I don't know exactly what you, what you call this tool. It's the, uh, it's the little, it's the little tool with the uh, little bits of wire on the end there. And I was using that to get some texture on a crafting project, which is done, and I hope I'm gonna be able to get the media on that done soon. Uh, I got some uh, amazing casting resin, which is, not my favorite, but with the coupon, it was a pretty good price. Um, I got these Evil Ted cosplay molds. Uh, and I intend to use these for some wall terrain. Um, and I bought these sight unseen, and I can't recommend them because they're just too big. I mean, clearly, I think these were made for cosplay. So, I mean, they're very, very big. E even for walls, like, I don't know what I would use this massive... Well, I guess like I'm making maybe a central central piece in the middle of the floor or something. The smaller ones, the smaller ones will be much more useful. And finally, I bought a couple sets of uh, like clay sculpting tools. Now, uh, the reason I bought these is because these are made out of silicone. Well, the tips are. And so these will be good for sculpting green stuff. Uh, and I'm hoping that these will work a little bit better and won't stick as much. I know certain stuff, green stuff, won't stick to. So I think silicone tools do work pretty good with that. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do some more sculpting as I work on my upcoming uh, Mr. Mushroom Man. So I got this guy from the Goodwill by the Pound. I'm going to sculpt somehow a big mushroom head on him and make him a uh, giant Mr. Mushroom Head. I hope to keep the original base because it does have some interesting uh, little details on it. This this is not going to be worth much money, unfortunately. Uh, somebody said I should sell it and you know get the, the whatever it is, but it's just it it is beat up. So I, I don't think eBay is a little bit persnickety like that. I think there's plenty of people that are selling those on eBay that where it's going to be mint. So there you have it. Uh, you can see in an upcoming video where I will be using these new uh, Sharpie metallic markers to paint up some stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to do a quick update video on some of my stuff that I've bought recently. And uh, yeah, that's uh, some very interesting stuff. I am so disappointed with the Gale Force 9 thing. 
Like this, I really, they even did a good job painting the inside. Uh, which normally with pre-painted stuff, they probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very nice sculpt. It's just the material. Uh, I do not like that ceramic style of material. And this is not like the good ceramic. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking of the engineering style ceramic, which is indestructible and whatnot. No, the, again, this this feels like a cheap uh, fairy house that you would find in a crafting store, made out of the cheap Chinese material that like will crumble if you happen to hit it in the wrong place. So yeah, I, it it looks nice enough. Boy, I, I won't recommend anybody buy. Again, this is the line called Battlefield in a Box. I don't like this material. <laughs> That's a personal preference, but uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly think if you're interested in getting something like this, you might be better off. And you're a painter. Now, obviously, if you don't want to paint anything, then that should definitely figure into your thing. But uh, there's definitely things like this that look really nice that are 3D printed. Uh, and yes, I am still working on my 3D printed uh, video, and boy, that's that's gonna be a whole nother blog about that, so I'll see you guys later. Just a quick update video to tide you guys over while I am working on my other video editing. Alright, see ya.